the importance of looking at the stars at night is really vital to our spiritual growth. Uh, when we think about this younger generation that mostly live in cities, don't look at the stars at night. And for a lot of reasons, for one, they spend most of their time indoors. Secondly, uh, the light pollution in the cities. And when we consider that throughout humanity, we have governed uh, our spiritual paths and growth through the connection with the universe and the vastness of all of it. And we, we have gotten to be a very disconnected culture from that. And it is something that is vital, we believe here, to our human expansion, our individual growth, especially when you think of how we humans could circumnavigate the globe. We could travel uh, anywhere and we'd be able to look at the stars to, to travel, to know we're going in the right direction. And now if people don't have a GPS uh, on their phone, they're just totally lost. And I think we're all a little guilty of that, but man, having a, um, having a guidance and understanding of the vastness of the universe can only really be done by looking upwards at night and realizing that we are cosmic dust ourselves. We are the Mystics of Texas. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Trey Schmidt. How y'all doing everybody? And today with us, we have Colton and Gil. Glad to see both y'all back here again. And I just wanted to make a quick clarification on the point of staring at the stars. Are we talking more about astrology or astrology, astronomy or astrology? Well, we're really talking about both. Uh, it's been important for humanity uh, in both aspects since the dawn of civilization. And it's been really important in all sorts of cave drawings and all sorts of the hieroglyphs. The and some of the greatest stories of time have came through looking at the stars and trying to make connections where you see Orion or you know something like that. Now, personally, I don't so much agree with the New Age astrology reading your horoscope. I think that's not exactly my bag. I mean, I'm sure if you like it, that's probably good for you. But I'll be honest, I think it's quite silly. I too esoteric for you. <laughs> I don't think that's too esoteric. I just think it's if you think that you can look at the stars and they're talking to you directly is kind of a weird thought. Like there's such a huge, vast universe out there. It just seems quite strange that they could uh, influence your everyday life. The importance of, like what we do here, Jill and I like to practice uh, going out and taking a uh, blanket. We have as many of y'all know, we have an outside kitchen that has a uh, tennis court back there. So it makes it really convenient to take a couple of blankets and lay on it at night. And we don't have any light pollution whatsoever. And they are vast. I mean, when you just look up at it, you can get lost for hours. You can stare and just randomly see the shooting stars. You realize the significance of your size. You know, we like to think that we as individuals are, uh, we walk around every day in this body and we are consumed with our own problems, our own individual growth. And then we can just take a pause and look up and realize there's so much more than just me. And I am connected to all of that. It is quite astonishing. And that's something that we are losing rapidly in this country because what do adults and kids do now? They get home from work, they're, they're busy, they gotta hurry up and do homework, they get on, you know, play a video game, they watch television and go to sleep and never hardly take a moment just to go outside and to gaze at the stars to look where they come from. We are all cosmic dust. What do you say, Gil? They say that this is a very important topic, and uh, yes, it is unfortunate that um, this uh, staring at the stars, at the sky, the midnight sky, has been reduced to a minimum by the enculturation of um, modern society and the light and noise pollution uh, of big cities and uh, electrical um, technologies 
that are arresting to our senses and taking our attention into a little box uh, of entertainment. And so I feel that there is uh, a great value in staring at the sky. Since we're living in a house of mirrors and it is important to also decide what mirror do you like to look at? What aspect of yourself would you like to become reacquainted with? And I feel that looking at the mirror of the sky and seeing those beautiful stars that are brightening the sky, I think it can remind us of very valuable aspects of ourselves. I think it was really well said. I mean, like Kevin said many times, we all come from the stars. I mean, no matter what you believe in, I mean, you can just look up and know that everything that's here on Earth is up in the stars. Yeah, and, and one thing that kids are robbed from, uh, like we have some children out here with us today, and for one, it takes away their imagination. I mean, how wonderful is it to sit outside uh, with your family or friends at night and, and stargaze and daydream about the cosmos? It's something that is becoming rapidly lost that I hope that humanity can uh, grasp and come back to. And for a lot of reasons, for one, it's extremely romantic. <laughs> if you have a romantic heart and you like to sit around with your wife uh, or your loved one or your spouse, uh, wow, what's, what's better than that to uh, contemplate yourself and, and then everything that you're a part of underneath the blanket of, of stars? Uh, it makes us feel small and great at the exact same time. It is a wonderful experience, and it's something that even I'm guilty of not doing all the time, uh, but I, for certainly we do it a lot more than most, uh, at least one night a week, and uh, it, it has enhanced my life greatly by just showing myself that, wow, you know, there's a lot more to life than just going inside and sitting in my bedroom and waiting to go to sleep. There, there's a lot to contemplate inside of myself and all the vastness around me. You know, I think you touched on something really big there that you go inside and wait to go to sleep or you watch a little piece of glass with a light behind it. And so many people, especially the younger generation, spends their entire life just looking at a piece of glass with a light behind it and that's all it really is you're robbed from all the creative things that you can come up with there on your own and you have this structured creativity that is forced upon you that you have all these people that are saying oh watch this and do this and this is what life is supposed to be like and this is what you strive for in life and this is what you do in life without letting anyone examine their own life and what makes them happy so i think you are extremely to, uh, that's an extremely valuable point and we see it everywhere and I think it is one of the major disconnects with how come it is difficult for people to start looking inward when they have their five senses and the most, one of the most important being the eyes and you're limiting yourself to staring at paint on sheetrock inside your house when in fact you can just walk right in your backyard and just look around not at your neighbor's house but straight up in the air it, it is an important faculty of understanding that we just continue to miss all the time i agree i agree um the midnight sky the night sky has been throughout history has been a source of inspiration, of wonderment. Uh, it's been a catalyst, a stimulator for the greatest artists that always uh, redefined culture and always pushed the boundaries of art and inspiration. Uh, some of the greatest poets, uh, that was one of the greatest mirrors that always been used as a source of inspiration. So. And art is a leading force in the weaving and crafting of culture. And as we move into the new era, we are going to be catalyzed to create together, to co-create a new culture. Um, and uh, I would be encouraging to 
take a peek every now and then at the sky and contemplate yourself. It, it, for some reason, it seems to be so much easier to do whenever you're staring at the vastness of space. Because you start to realize that inside of you is also vast. And all of it is so connected. And it becomes a situation where if we continue to lock ourselves up in, a, in rooms to hurry and go to sleep and wait until the sun comes up, well, we're denying ourselves the experience of connecting to the energies of the universe. And it is a something, I think, vital that I, we should encourage. And what a great family event, you know, once or twice a month, just to walk outside with your children or your loved one and take a little gander, do a little imagination, contemplate if that is so big and infinity goes forever, it's infinity. And so does infinity go inside you. You can never get to the smallest thing. We are all of it. We are infinity just like this is infinity. And I hope that we can encourage some of you to do that. Go, go take a night stroll and gaze at the stars, either alone or with somebody you love. It makes a big, big difference. Well, I was gonna go, uh, you, don't, you don't have to subscribe to Christianity, but even King David, when he's, he's looking at the stars, he says, uh, what's man that you're mindful of? Because it's so vast. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It is. So what are we that obviously, like I do it too. You look up and you're just like, man, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, then I have a quote I always say to myself is, uh, get over the sun. As in like, you need to be over the sun because we're so focused in this enclosed system. Yeah, Society. most I mean, yeah most most people can't even uh, wrap their mind around what is beyond the sun, and they never even think about it because they go inside before they even get a chance to see the stars. I don't think most people get past that. I got to do this and this and this to go to work. <laughs> I don't even think. Yeah, no, yeah, that. exactly. That's what I'm saying. Get over the sun. You're so focused on yourself and what you got to do for work, and that you need to do this and that, and and then the Hebrews, the ancient. Uh, Remember they the blood moons, all the yeah. signs of the heavens. They all use that for discern the times, which is still relevant now, right? Yeah, heck yeah! I, I have a sundial in my back. Gil, you would know. <laughs> <laughs> we all know. Yeah, we we all know. I can't get my sundial to keep time. I keep setting it in the wrong spot. <laughs> <laughs> Need to take it back to the sundial cells. <laughs> right. <laughs> I can't get my sundial to. What's that scripture that I forgot? What prophet God's talking to, but. He's asking them, can you hold the constellation in your hand like I can? I forgot who he's talking to. I don't know if it's... I don't remember that one either. I, was say, I don't remember that one yet. Maybe we hadn't got there. We got to keep you from fidgeting. I yeah, I think that is important. Saw me <laughs> you know, if you, if you see the... Uh, if you can picture uh, the infinite, the infinite, everything is this massive web of connectivity. And it's all holding itself up, including us. By unseen forces that we have absolutely no idea what they are. The wise men, the shepherd, they use the stars to get the, yeah, get the Bethlehem. Yeah. Navigation. Yeah. I'm sure Indians did it as well, you know. Well, Magellan, it's, Columbus. It's, exactly, yeah, yes. You, you can't, uh, the Polaris, the North Star. Yeah, you cannot circumnavigate the globe uh, before recent times without the stars. Yeah. Tricky proposition. Yeah, and people, well, even people uh, on a uh, horse and buggy riding through, uh, riding outside of the town, it was easy to get turned around and outside of bigger cities and you just look up at the stars on a <coughs> clear night and you know you're going in the right direction. Follow the sun as well. Yeah, of course, follow the sun. It gives you a good indication how long you, you have before the sun goes away. How do you think I got here today? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> this working. it's about 1.30. <laughs> I'm 38 meters away. <laughs> that's, why, that's why he was late, because he was doing the sun and forgot to account for daylight savings and the backlights and backcourse, yeah. That's a leap year.
Oh yeah, yeah, the leap years and all that. You got to take into account all these things. <laughs> <laughs> the geometric shift of. Have y'all ever? This is sorry, segue, but there's a Michael Rood. He lives in Israel. He he uh, translates to Hebrew and stuff. So uh, he made the. You know, there's a KJV. There's a CKJV, which is the correct King James right. version, and uh, he showed you how the wise men. It took them probably. When, you know, like the Bible now says, like, oh, Jesus was born and the wise men were there. Yeah. So it probably accurately, it took them like four years to even get there. So he was like already like five years old by the time they get there. Maybe. maybe. Who, who, know, who knows these things? But was, I was talking about this stuff. So. Yeah, it's all fascinating. And it's something that we take for granted. And it's something that children and adults know that it's out there. Yet we don't take the time to immerse ourselves in the gift of understanding the universe, nor do we take the time to go, ah, smile on me, universe, smile on me. I'm going to smile back. <laughs> we just don't do it. Mm. When I did my little uh, pilgrimage, whatever, I remember I was talking to this, uh, this guy at the skate park, and... Uh, <laughs> He was a he was like a missionary guy, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go like walk across Texas and kind of do what like what Paul did. He's like, oh, he's like, man, I think if Paul lived here now, he'd drive a car. I was like, I don't think so, because <laughs> you know what, what you can soak in. Oh yeah, like, walking is a big difference in drive. For you to go 500 miles, like from here to West Texas, it'll take you over like a month to get there. It's a long. You know what? how much healing you could do in that time. Or you can get every emotion out. You can laugh, cry. You're oh, driving, God. you're just like, uh, you know you're gonna get to uh, McDonald's pretty soon, so you ain't worried about it. <laughs> you ain't worried about nothing. Besides, well, not just yeah. that, but the people that you would meet on the way, if you're in a car, you're just gonna go straight to it and you're gonna stop when you need gas or whatever, you're gonna get to your destination. But if you're walking, it's not so much about the destination, about the journey. Well, luckily, you'll have time to stare at the stars at night on the lawn. Yeah, you get to take it all in. Yeah, you get a lot of time to take it. It's crazy what, it's like I did, man. You start meeting people. You meet other homeless people, and you're walking with these homeless people <laughs> for like 20 miles. And you get to know their story, but if you're driving, you're just... You're kind of apathetic towards everybody. You got to get to your destination. You get road rage, and exactly. everybody gets mad at everybody. And then, then you know, you're not using the stars to navigate yourself. You're using the GPS and the, uh, the interstate signs. It's like we uh, we hung out a couple of days ago, and we just sat outside on rocking chairs in the sun. Yeah, isn't it great? That. Oh man, it's yeah. fantastic. I'd rather do that than anything. Well, it's one. <laughs> it's one. It's one of the great things about coming out here because every Sunday is so different. You know, we have larger and small groups and we yeah, oftentimes if the weather is nice a lot of times conversations with people can go into the night sometimes they don't uh, but whoever likes to stay can and we sit outside and we talk and we stargaze and we work on figuring this life out and how to be better people and man how does that uh and then snap oh. then you're like oh i gotta go work tomorrow Man, oh. back at it. <laughs> Dead gummit. Help me, stars. Help me. <laughs> Let me uh, get corrupted all over again and release at the end of the weekend. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, that's what it takes sometimes. You know, we are wrapped up in, in this world and, and this, um, you know, we, ha we have to work, most of us, to sustain our, our life, to be able to eat, have a roof over our head, to uh, pay the extortion uh, of governments that, some people call taxes and uh that's right it, it's uh it's an amazing proposition to think that uh, we're robbing ourselves of the connection to the universe and I, I hope that this short video helps you all to expand your horizons take your kids outside take a stroll in a in a park where there's not much light and and really soak it in for yourself and your soul and this is extremely beneficial and a big stress reliever too Anybody else have anything to add to that? I don't think so. It was well said. Thank you all for joining us. And you're welcome to come out if you stayed this long in the video. If you're a local to East Texas or Northwest Louisiana, come visit us. We'd love to have you out. 
And you can find us at mysticsoftexas.com and our videos are everywhere. YouTube, Rumble, BitChute, all of them. Thank you. Have a good day.